another episode of With The Chiefs. Wait, 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 wait. Man, I need more rest. I hope you've got, I've got your last name right there. It's a very good pronunciation. You should know better than that now, Donald. I know. <laughs> <laughs>
Um, then Friday was I did 23k, just um, seven bridges loop. Yesterday was freezing cold and windy, and I like yeah sat in bed all day and then it started raining i was like oh my yeah. god i made the wrong Rain's choice heavy as well <laughs> um, yeah and ended up finally dragging myself out the door and did 16 k's um and then today i did an hour and a half on the hills it was meant to be two and a half hours but i think i slept in a bit too long and then um had other commitments so i <laughs> only got an hour and a half done but i might try and get out again after this like, um 60 minutes or yeah, probably another 60 minutes, just make it into a, a longer Sunday. Um, but total so far, 127 Ks, um, about 10 hours, which is pretty good. Are nice. you happy you sat out of Sydney 10 just so you can focus? Yeah, yeah, definitely. I think um, I was, yeah, just been feeling pretty tired the last couple of weeks. And um, yeah, I think Sydney 10 might have tipped me over the edge a bit too much. Yeah. Mm. Um, so yeah, I, I was kind of planning on doing it and just taking it a bit easier, but um, this morning I was like, oh, I'm still pretty sleepy. I just want to get a couple extra hours sleep. Didn't realize how early the start was. Yeah. For it. Yeah. Yeah. You've had a couple of really big weeks as well, Dom. Mm, Numbers wise. No, it's going pretty good. Yeah. Like I think I've ran over 115 k's for the past like seven or eight weeks, yeah. which is good. And now we're starting to get a bit more into the thick of it so um yeah no i think we're on track which is good nice yeah it's yeah. crunch time now that's it yeah yeah there's what another good seven, six weeks yeah six weeks yeah yeah which would be good yeah i just realized i don't have my sesh i forgot to i don't even know what i did on tuesday uh, <laughs> <laughs> i think um damn it i think it was a pyramid set can you have a look on <laughs> <laughs> did you get out on friday morning Dom? See, uh, friday morning or was it afternoon afternoons yeah yeah did you get out friday morning Luke? um you're a morning yeah runner, aren't you? yeah yeah did you see all the fog no no you didn't have any fog on friday no. morning no friday no or maybe i'm just was too out of it too out of it yeah ah i was in the taper i should have been fresh should have been fresh yeah yeah <laughs> No, I tried to get out on the bike Friday morning and it was just too dangerous. Couldn't see in front oh, of Oh, yeah. Really? Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, on just the down through roads. Very, yeah. I just couldn't see anywhere in front. Yeah. Jeez. Oh, I wouldn't take that risk. That's no. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but how's um, the rest of the week gone? Yeah, you know, for me, it's been um, a bit of a, a weird week just because work's been so busy. So Monday to Saturday for me for work. So this week was just trying to get out when I could. Um Got out probably twice on the bike and then three little runs throughout the week, a couple of strength sessions, so nothing too crazy in terms of numbers, but trying to get in what I can when you finish at 7.30 at night, so yeah, can what be you, a bit difficult. What are, you, what, are you training, what are you training for at the moment? Well, I've got a bit of a bone to pick with the city to surf. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think I mentioned to you boys focus. last week. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, so I think the last two years I've gone an hour and two so i want to try and get under the hour yeah um so that's probably the main focus for the next little bit and then i'm going to sign up for the half ironman coming in september 22 out of western sydney Mm -hmm. so that'll be a bit of a a push for that okay Mm. yeah um how do you what's your ideal training week look like when you're training for a try it's a really big question. <laughs> ideal. Um, yeah. Is that around work or without the idea of work? Uh, well, let's say like you just a normal week, like with work. So what you do to... So sun- Sunday, I'll start on Sunday just because it is Sunday today. Yeah. Um, typically will be like a long ride with efforts. Yeah. Um, so heading out towards a couple of hills, just cruising out there and then you effort up the hill. Yeah. And what's a long, long ride? Yeah. Not- um, today was 75 clicks. So 75K. Yeah. Um, that's probably on the shorter side of it. Uh-huh. Um, can get above 100, 110. Um, typically, I'd like to run off the bike, but also just depends what the body's like. Um, how you're feeling today was, was a no-go because I hadn't been out on a Sunday for a while. So the body was saying no. So took it a little bit easier. Um but then generally, um, there's probably one 
more zone two-ish ride throughout the week and one with a bit of an interval. So we, we try to hit three minute efforts with about a two minute recovery, um, about five to six times on the bike. Um, and that can be a bit of a, as I'm sure you boys know, pretty hard with your runs. And then throughout the week, just getting out when I can running wise. So um, this week I've probably done, oh, not too much to be honest, but just a couple of easy runs. Yeah. See what the body's looking like. <laughs> the efforts on the bike, does it get, where do you go to do that? Like, does it get hectic if with traffic or because I don't have experience on the bike? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Really good question. Man. Um, yeah, no, so the home is cycling out at Homebush. So, okay. Um, there's a bike lane out there. There's probably anywhere between 50 to 80 riders in the morning on a Tuesday, Thursday. Yep. Um, so you can get some pretty big bunches and then, yeah, you just roll around the stadium, loop back around. You try and effort when there's not a traffic light. Yep. Just otherwise it sort of breaks it up. Yeah. yeah. Can be pretty annoying um, if you do get stopped. So, yeah, generally three minutes is probably the max you can do just okay. because of that traffic light. Mm. Um, it can be a bit dicey though with some some of the traffic. So, yeah, you got to be a bit careful, that's for sure. That's one thing that's scared. The prospect of riding on the road kind of scares the hell out of me. Oh, I reckon in the first 15 minutes of today's ride, I've got about six dickheads just right behind me honking their horn just i don't know what the problem was it was like 605 in the morning where do they have to be yeah, like, yeah. it's just ridiculous so you get people getting super close yeah 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 super close and then they pull out around you accelerate so you hear this car just yeah revving, yeah and you think geez what's going on there yeah and, um which can be a bit dicey and scary yeah um but yeah it's probably now four years i've been on the bike so you sort of get used to that um but obviously if a car's going to hit you it's going to do some damage so yeah be careful Mm. what was it like when you started was it oh mate i was on bike paths it was pretty scary yeah i was gonna say yeah um so when you first get out and you're a novice on the road like someone i think who did we had an older bloke takes out and he sort of took the reins um and you learn pretty quick because there's a few calls that you need to know. Um, and then traffic-wise, people are just generally okay. Mm. So they'll go around you, they'll give you enough space. space yeah. Um, but the idea is if you're in a bunch, you sort of act like a car. Yeah. So you stick together, you take you know, the lane, otherwise you're going to get taken out, which is a pretty big issue. Mm. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, it's definitely <laughs> Very a pretty big, big issue. issue. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Is it? I would imagine it'd be scary in the pack because then you can't like people aren't going. Oh, mate! And going like, around you because yeah. you're sort of taking the lane. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's, it's just like so. Say you're doing an effort or you're in a race or a run, and you take the shoulder of someone. If they sidestep one way, or if there's a stick, and no one knows. Like, do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. It just could be dangerous. Um, so you're sort of reliant on the other people around you to to be your eyes because mm. you can't see in front. So, yeah. if you're sitting behind, you've got no vision. So, you sort of are trusting them. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. If that's not like so scary. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah that's why you got to pick and choose the people you ride with. So, yeah. yeah. Have you had any close calls? Oh, I had an embarrassing fall when I first started. Um, so, I was on a bike path and uh, there was some construction around. And for the cyclists out there who you know, got into cycling and bought like a cheap bike. The bikes had something like a 23 mil tire. So quite thin compared to what they ride on now, like 28 to 30 mil. Mm-hmm. But have you ever seen like um, the pavement where there's like a gap between each, I guess, block of concrete on the pavement? Have you ever seen that? And they've got like a little, like it's, I don't know how to explain like it. The but construction like a, joint? Yeah. So yeah. there was, a, there was a, like a gap and it was probably big enough for the tire to go in there. So I'm riding up this hill on the bike path and there was all these tradies and blokes around and the tires got caught in there and it just fucking sent me over the oh, bed. Oh, um, first instinct, put your hands out, um, tore all the skin off my hands. And uh, just cause I'm in the business of remedial massage as well, um, that's a pretty that's, big deal. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I had to take two weeks off work. Far out. Oh, wow. I had no skin in my hands. So I was like, shit, all right, 
now, you know, typically I'll wear gloves. gloves. But it still didn't, it, it bruised the ego big time. Yeah. Because yeah. you had all the traders just looking around and no <laughs> yeah. one said anything, but, but they were all laughing. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. Like it was just your hands, no broken. Just my hands. Yeah. That's yeah. right. Haven't fallen since, so, so pretty good. That was like four years ago. Mm. What about swimming? Do you- oh, mate. That's the one thing that I don't like. Yeah, okay. <laughs> so, for me, it's like, Leading up to a try, I'll probably try and get in the water at least once or twice a week mm-hmm. because that's my worst leg. Yeah. Um, typically, I like to do it outdoors rather than indoors. Um, but I think it's something that everyone needs to do. It's quite nice as well, I'm sure, you boys, or maybe. But if you can get in the water after a big week in your legs, it's sort of nice to just cruise through. It's a bit more relaxing you flush the legs a bit it yep. feels nicer rather than going out for an easy run or an easy ride i find the water's just a bit more relaxing mm. yeah it's interesting the only time i've ever been swimming in the last well since i was a kid was the after marathon because mm. i was like cooked and just went in the pool and i couldn't do more than like a few laps right mm. I don't know. It's just aerobically. Yeah. Like it's, it's just, just completely different. Yeah. Like yeah, I'm, yeah, yeah. I'm like, how I'm, yeah. aren't I fit? Like, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. But then, yeah, you're like paddling, and I do two laps, and I'm literally gassed. Yeah. Right. It's like I don't have the technique. The technique to like I've got you know how I've got my shoulder, which is, but like still it should still be able to hmm. aerobically figure out. Yeah, I don't know. It was weird. I think it's like, maybe it's just like, takes like a month or so. To get used mm. to it. Yeah, yeah. It's like with most things, right? Like yeah. any yeah. sport, you, you're you not going to be good at it straight away. So Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I think I would have assumed. I don't know. I just got in the pool being like, oh, I probably would still be. Did you feel nah, better getting in the water? Insane, yeah. Um, no, I was demoralized. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't, I don't enjoy, I just don't enjoy swimming. Yeah. Nah. yeah. Don't like getting your hair wet, hey? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Can you tell? Yeah. <laughs> Um, it's, what a good, about you? it's a good feeling coming out of the, the pool after a big session like you feel so relaxed and just like oh like that was nice um yeah i felt you don't quite feel the same with a run like you feel after a big long run you feel tired but it's like i don't know like an annoying tired yeah whereas like running is like or swimming is like um yeah it's like a nice like relaxing kind of like or I can go have a nap now. I feel really good. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's an interesting thing because I definitely feel the opposite. If I'm in the water and I'm doing a set, like I'm, yeah, I don't feel good. After I feel better, but I'm like during, I'm like, oh, this oh, is just, tough. Like getting out of the pool, like you feel so good. Like you just feel like, oh, like yeah. relaxed. Yeah. 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 That's fair, mate. That's yeah. A good I don't know. When, when did you do swimming? I actually did a, a triathlon. Um, Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> when was um first year out of school i oh. me and a friend did um bestie yeah yeah a sprint distance triathlon nice um yeah so we got right into it we were like swimming was probably what we trained the most i reckon yeah um but we were in the pool maybe three or four times a week and yeah. um didn't spend enough time on a bike because mm. i didn't even own a bike we just borrowed a friend's bike <laughs> and uh sounds about right yeah, yeah. The, running, <laughs> yeah. the running was okay like we were yeah we were decent runners so i think at the time i was running like a 18 minute 5k um yeah, yeah but then yeah did the, the sprint distance triathlon was like no nah, that's way too much like yeah having to train three sports is just your whole life gone so yeah um it was like i enjoy running the most i'd just rather stick to that how did you feel coming off the bike and putting down a bit of pepper in the run? Oh, you feel like um, that run off the bike sort of stuff, you need to practice that. Mm. Like, um, yeah, it, it takes like a K to kind of yeah. get your legs back because yeah. it's weird. Like if it's your first time doing it, your mm. quads are just destroyed and like you like your whole form and everything is different. Like, yeah, um, yeah it's weird. Yeah, it's a bit of a, a skill. Mm. Um, which is why you have to practice it, right? Yeah. Uh, but you definitely have a lot of lactate build up in those quads. Mm. And then being the runner, you want to go as fast as you can, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, and it can be a bit of a downfall as well because then you can get cramps and yeah. all the other stuff. But I don't know, starting a 5K and your heart rate's already close to zone five. Yeah. And then you try and push as hard as you can. 
and just to see what else you can get out is pretty tough. Yeah, I think... Um, what did you end up doing it in? Do you remember? Oh, it was like an hour 20. Jeez, that's pretty good. Yeah, I think um, the 5K time I split like 22 minutes. And yeah, like my PB at the time was like 18 minutes and I was like pretty disappointed with that. I thought sub 20 would have been easy. If yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Bike, but it's not yeah. on the bike. And yeah. a swim. Yeah, and yeah. a swim, yeah. It's some mental fatigue as well. Like mm. if you think of it, like just having to do three sports. Yeah. Um, so for me, um, being on the bike, if a sprint distance triathlon being 20K, mm. um, but anything longer than that, you obviously dialed in for the race, for the ride. Mm. But within the last 10, 15, maybe 20 Ks, you're just thinking about the run. Mm. So you're still having to put out watts and you're watching your cycling computer and you're saying, well, I know I need to hit these numbers. But then mentally you're drifting. Yeah. So you're trying to go, well, what do I need to do for this run? Mm. How do I need to approach this? When I get into transition, shoes come on. Am I going to go out a little bit harder or am I going to just peel back? Do mm. I need to eat before? So there's a whole yeah. lot of other things that you need to consider. Yeah, yeah. Um, which is why it's probably one of the hardest sports in the world to do. Mm. Yeah, Try there's them. a lot to it, like trying to to balance all that stuff, like and yeah. go at the right effort. Mm. I yeah. mean, you boys are doing a marathon coming up pretty soon. Maybe we could entice you two to do a uh, full distance Ironman. No oh, chance. Yeah. I uh, can't swim two laps. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe, maybe we could put a poll on for the viewers and see who wants to see Dom and nah, Luke. I'll, you I'll, know? I'd rather get on the trails. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. That's fair enough. Yeah, no, right, that's I, reckon, fair enough. I reckon you could do it, Dom. Oh, I don't know. I'll like, support you all the way. <laughs> I don't know if I could be bothered, though. Like, I'd rather be running. Like, I've already done the triathlon. Give all it right, a right. Yeah. How, how about we, we put this down now and you can do a, uh, a team event. For triathlon. Oh, yeah. So, I can happily put up my hand for the run. Yeah. Dom's just said he's he gets feeling relaxed in the water. Yeah, <laughs> I'll get on the bike. And I'll, I'll <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, did I say I'll do the run? Yeah. I'll do, I'll do the bike. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> All right, good. I'll do the run. Yeah. 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 Okay. Mate, we could, okay, go, we could be fun. Yeah. yeah, let's give that a go. That sounds good. That sounds that's really good. Yeah. What? Where do they do? Is it like... A, a different event on no no events? so like you real- you still compete the same day that um like the iron man or the half iron man yeah. or whatever it is yeah um so you whoever swims will start with the rest of the age groupers yeah um and then i think you get out of the water and you got to tag me or something or whoever the next person is and mm. you put the time and chip on and away you go and then your race is done yeah um so it might be a good that sounds fun yeah, yeah. that'd be sick yeah. what what are the, what's like a competitive time well, the, for an iron man yeah in like for what the distance? relay yeah like in, for a relay yeah i don't know man but um if you could get under 12 hours oh, for, an iron man. for an iron man yeah that's pretty good nah. under 10 is like we elite would, yeah if we did a team event we'd go quicker than that though. what did robbie yeah, yeah. what did robbie just do yeah we did uh, eight hours or something wasn't yeah it? sub nine insane. yeah yeah. Nice. yeah yeah he's insane. he'll be in sydney soon yeah well, he's a beast yeah yeah, yeah. Um, It'd be a good one to get on the podcast. Oh, yeah, we've had, had, him, yeah. had him on, yeah. Jeez. Yeah, Past yeah. guest, yep. Yeah. Um, Smitty, what about your week? How's your training been? My training has been good. I think the I was waiting because like the previous long run, big long run we did, I pulled up with lots of fatigue. So I was kind of, we did another big long run on the Sunday, which we've talked about. And I was kind of waiting for the, <laughs> I was like waiting on Monday, like, for the fatigue because <laughs> it was so it was like pretty miserable is that the one i saw you guys on you did out at Rhodes? yeah yeah mm. uh yes yeah that that was one mm. um i felt yeah i felt really fatigued the next like sort of three days mm. and i think i might have been like it run my immune system down a bit because i just felt off whereas this week like i felt pretty good and i was nice. like so i was like maybe i've adapted somewhat to those bigger runs touch wood um but yeah this week's been a taper taper week given we had sydney 10 i did tuesday which i'm trying to remember and i think uh, i think we did like a pyramid set so it was yeah. like a smaller it was like 1200 1200 um like, 800 400 800 like, 1200 is that right uh, 1k 800 400 oh, okay. Oh, the one car. I didn't stop my watch. Yeah, that's right. Oh, yeah. I didn't then the next one was a, the next one was a twelve hundred. So you're right. It was a good sharpest. And session. then a three k to finish. 
and then I did the like a bit of a marapace tempo at the end um which that was good I was done I was feeling pretty fresh given Sunday was quite a big workout so but I knew for this week it was just going to be like tapering yep um I did 90 minutes on Wednesday which was which was good uh Thursday I did 60 minutes I did and gym on the Tuesday nice um, mate that was a felt like a half hour step I was kind of like fuffing around for a lot of it to be honest but um <laughs> I, I did I did um get it done and I'm still pulling up sore like Dom's sore so I'm like am I doing this wrong mm. every week mm. <laughs> which I think <laughs> Dom's is good though like but means like that, yeah. I've been doing it for like a month now mm. yeah what do you reckon why am I still getting Dom's <laughs> yeah yeah no mate but Dom's is something that adaptation to the tissue right yeah so we'll use running as an example if you're a couch person and then you get up and you run 10k you're going to be pretty sore yeah so for someone like you if you haven't been in the gym for too long you don't have much of a training history in the gym or lifting history your tissue is just going to be unsure of what's happening so it's still adjusting um but it's consistency in the gym that you need to help get over those yeah you know doms early long early on yep so if you can get in the gym maybe two times a week mm. do a similar session each time you'll find that you won't have that fatigue but then you probably need a little bit more stimulus because your body's adapting to whatever you're throwing at it yeah i've been just going one mm. one time mm. and then this time i did a little bit heavier um deadlift so nice. that probably yeah i mean not crazy but i think it was like no 50 or 60 kilos not much but i felt it was heavier like it felt yeah. like a little bit on my lower back and i right. was like <laughs> probably a bit heavy for me <laughs> um so i just shortened the reps yeah but it was good i feel like at least when i get in the gym and do like although it's not crazy it gives me a bit of peace of mind that i'm like getting in there every week at yep. least yeah and i feel like <clears throat> you know my legs are I don't know. I feel my hamstring certainly stronger. So, it's good. Um, Thursday, 60 minutes. Friday, no no session this week. Yep. Just not even like a taper session. Just ran easy, 45. Um, and then Saturday, just 30 minutes with, um, with Nick, who ran really well, which I'll talk about. Um, and then, yeah, the race today, which mm. was... Which was good. We couldn't have really... The weather was pretty much perfect. Um, yeah. It was a little bit windy, but it wasn't. That didn't really impact. Like, it wasn't too too bad. Um, the Saturday was actually freezing. Yeah, Saturday was nice. Yeah, yeah. it just felt like a different season. Yeah. But it was a gust, the winds. The, the, yeah. Yeah. Today, yeah. today was nice. Yeah. Mm. It was quite fresh, but it was nice. Yeah, mm. it was good. Mm. Pretty, like, perfect sort of temperature. For, for running. For running, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So... Right off the bat, there was no excuses yeah. <laughs> with, the, with the weather. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, I think the plan was to go out at like 32 flat or even quicker, like 309 pace on the watch, and which is like sub 32. Um, uh, I don't know. I felt like I've been obviously like doing sessions well and like fit and stuff like that, but I didn't know. I wasn't sure if I was like in that shape um even though we've talked it up a bit yeah. <laughs> yeah. even though dom commented on my strava like 3149 i was like fuck <laughs> was, wasn't one of your strava titles with a rocket as yeah, well? yeah, 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 yeah 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 i was like trying to just jam myself up could have kept that to one the for moon, myself mate, yeah, to the moon. yeah. Oh. um so we've already got very high expectations yeah but put in perspective i ran 33 flat no yeah 33 flat no, thirty three thirty last year. Um, so I went out at like that three oh nine pace. I think the first K was three oh six, which is quick. Then there was sort of like a pack. There was like Alex Shaw and a few others that were sort of keeping that pace. Matt Gore was a little bit ahead and was like pushing for low thirty one, I think. Um I stayed and Tim Broxett was there as well. So, there was like a bit of a pack forming. I know they were sort of going around 32 minutes. There was like a, then um, 
I think I kept that pace for about 3k and then I noticed like it was it was quick like um but it was okay until 5k I split 15 56 I think it was through five which is like yeah my PB is 1548 so like it was it was fast but I kind of that's where I needed to be if I was going to run sort of 32 mm. and at that point I kind of yeah knew that it was might have to change my expectations because it was starting to like be quite um like i was starting to slow at that point the next few k's were slower and then like once you see the pack drift away oh, no, it's hard yeah. like yeah, yeah it's hard mentally to stay switched on yeah so i think i think i lost well no i was pushing like I, it was just it was just that little bit too quick like i wasn't i wasn't my fitness didn't feel like it was there yeah but um what did you do to stay mentally intact i just had to ignore like what my head was telling me like because yeah. just keep keep getting through it just mm. i felt like i don't know it's hard to tell if like i could have had a because you do when when you like i started to when the pack started drifting away you kind of like give up mentally a little bit and you stop pushing as hard mm. but then you're also weighing up like if i keep pushing hard like i'm gonna this blow up's gonna be even worse yeah mm. so you you're kind of doing this <laughs> equation in your head mm. <laughs> um um did you have anyone around you though i had one other guy with me who mm. i was like chasing and then um but that, that was about it and then some other guy was like pushing hard and went in front of us so i did actually have someone to work with which was which yep. was good mm. yep. um and then after like 6k it just becomes a bit of a blur like you just mm. yeah ke- keeping your head in it just trying to push like push that's all you're focusing on so um then when's the turnaround it's like Is seven it? just past 7k maybe yeah it must come be. back around. Yeah, yeah yeah so once i turned around i was like okay home stretch yeah not too mm. long to go um i was trying to just push i think the slowest k was like a 320 um okay which is not terrible but it's yeah um it was around sort of when I started slowing, it was like 318, then like 350. Like I was still hovering around there, which is not like too much of a blow up, mm. although it was much slower than like what I went out at. Mm. And then, um, yeah, just, just kept fighting and got to um, maintain around the same pace, just under 320. I think the last K was like 314. Um, well, so you picked it up again. I picked it up last yeah, K. But still not quite to what you were running at though. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, it was a tough race, but they're all tough. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I don't think I'll ever go. That wasn't a tough, like that went. That was an easy race. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But like, I mean, 30, over 30 second PB. Mm. Um, Huge, mate. You yeah. know, massive improvement on, on last year. Mm. Um and yeah i think it was i think it was good overall there was some lots of good performances out there as well mm. um i got them here actually get some Del- delta shout outs real quick yeah <laughs> um there was um i think andrew Eady went 3606 that was a 44 second pb um cormac ran 3255 really wow yeah and that was like 1631 and then a 1623 which is impressive to negative split it yeah that's a much more disciplined approach yeah (laughs) um um jeet from delta ran 3445 1720 and then 1724 so nice and consistent jose ran 3902 which was a big 70 second 76 second pb okay. um uh, my run of the day is josh josh mackwell ran 35 26 which is a three minute pb i think from yeah three minute pb yeah Jeez. so he's under the getting coached by ant wood um he's just been locking in for the last six months training really well consistently um he ran 
what was it, 1730 in the 5K. So we, that, that was a big PB mm. leading up to it. But yeah, I saw him at the finish and he was so cooked. Yeah. Like complete, like that's you how you imagine, run. Right? Yeah. yeah. Three minute PB. Yeah. It reminded me of... What you yeah. Well, the 10K, it cooks you pretty hard. Oh, like, yeah. Mm. Yeah. It's like he must have just nailed nailed that. Mm. And then Nick, Nick Zenos ran 35, 37. Jeez, he's coming on. Yeah. incredible. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, like only started doing more structured training somewhat recently. Mm. Um, so, yeah, he wants to run sub three at City Marathon. I think we could be... Could be on. Could mm. be on, yeah. Um, Shane Wood, 34, 35, which is super impressive. Yeah. You know Shane? Not so much. Not so much? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I thought you might have met him. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it looks like he knew it. Yeah. <laughs> um, Aaron Skinner, 34, 48. So he ran negative split as well, 17, 25. Wow, wow. That's big for Aaron, yeah. Yeah, geez. very big, very big. You know Aaron? <laughs> <laughs> Under the bus. Yeah. <laughs> and Simon, um, Simon Trong ran 43.19. Solid. So 21.50 and then 21.29. Nice. Okay. Which is good. Mm. Um, and then the female... Standouts were Amy Lamb ran forty one thirty four, mm-hmm. um, negative split as well, um, and Izzy oh, I don't have the last name but she's in the Chiefs Challenge ran like a huge PB thirty seven fifty three. So I think three weeks ago she wasn't sure if she's going to run like sub thirty nine. Well, wow. so huge result. She was stoked mm. and yeah, that's probably my pick, Izzy and. Uh, Josh. Josh. For the, for the like as in, Yeah. Oh, no, the, no, no, no. Today. Like today. Best races. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, yeah. Right. yeah. Um, there's obviously heaps of good other standouts that are not part of Delta, but I pretty much just stole this off Chris Gatt. He sent me these. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. Mate, it's would good. you change anything from your race? So, if you were to approach it again, yep. would you go the same way or would you change it? Tomorrow's, uh, tomorrow's race day, you're feeling fresh? Yeah, but you have all this knowledge. All this knowledge mm. oh, already in I your do? mind. What would you do? Yeah. Wow, that's a very unrealistic scenario. But <laughs> 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 let's let's go with it. Um, yeah, I mean, I would sort of go out slower, like right. like probably go out at the maybe like you know like three eleven, three twelve pace, and try and run closer to like low. 32 maybe maybe like just going out that too quick i burnt myself early um and then i would say to myself like just mentally stay stay stronger like because i i did lose it in parts of those races Mm. and it's often after the race it's often hard to tell like am i just saying this now because i'm like not in the pain cave like do you know what i mean like it's hard to tell if you can actually push harder because mm. when i stopped i was like oh, i probably could have run probably could have kept more mentally switched on or i probably could have but then what that's what you're saying once you stopped like yeah, not once yeah. you're in not once you're in the heat of the race yeah mm. so long way of saying i would have gone out just a bit slower yeah and yeah it doesn't sound like too much slower though like only mm. a couple of seconds a yeah. but maybe you were right just on controlled. that limit yeah yeah. yeah yeah it's hard to tell yeah it's hard to tell interesting but do you reckon you'd not be racing then because it sounds like you were racing that first three k's you were in the pack you were like this is on yeah yeah and yes. you're in the moment whereas do you then mentally go all right i'm on for a low was it 32 or 31 do yeah, i 32. peel back a little bit for the first five see the pack go yeah exactly that's like, that's yeah that's the hard thing like mm-hmm. i would have to make that call mm-hmm. and i probably would always opt to go for it yep um so yeah hard to tell good question though yeah (laughs) yeah yeah yeah. Yeah, um i'm still like there's still one way to still going out hard is one way to run it like and still get the time like i didn't i didn't blow up like completely yeah but um just not 
the positive split or yep. how you would ideally because i've when i ran my pb previously like i pretty much was it completely even mm. which i felt like i ran till 6k and then i really started working mm-hmm. and that was i felt like the optimal way to, to do it to do it um but yeah it's just a different way of doing it when you go out too fast and then you like try and control yourself ment- mentally yeah and just stay switched on yeah how did you run your uh 32 flat well i went out fast and thought i was going too quick went through 5k in 15.55 Oh yeah, mm-hmm. and then you we're controlled just, it. We just work and like, oh uh, yeah, I was fit back then. I was really yeah. fit, um, but that second five k was like so hard. Yeah, yeah. wow. Okay, yeah. so you were mentally, you didn't slip. You just and obviously the fitness oh, was there. Yeah, I think I really like wanted it. Like, but. I had that desire to kind of push and give yep. it everything. Yeah, um, which yeah, I think and it was good. Like, we we're in a pack. There was maybe five of us, all kind of mm-hmm. like working together so um that helped a lot and i was with them the whole way mm. which is um good because it kind of keeps you honest sam yeah. shield it's reassuring yeah 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 um, was it sam shield yeah was sam shield and was alex there yeah alex shaw and um a guy connor whitely who's oh like he's, sort <laughs> he's of gone to a new now. level yeah <laughs> he's sub 30 guy definitely yeah, yeah like well, well under yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. no he's like yeah. 5k state champion yeah, yeah 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 well um, machine yeah. yeah so that's yeah 32 flat bloody yeah certainly oh, can't yeah, just roll out of bed and run that <laughs> no yeah yeah i don't know you went too far off it uh yeah i think come next year with another good year mm. should maybe be able to get close to it or yeah, yeah. you'll be stronger by then as well mate yeah, yeah that's that, true. De- that deadlift will be going up <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah i think the way i ran remember sydney harbour 10 when i ran like close to oh yeah 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 that was me that's probably the best i've ever Pushed. i still remember that because I was hurting from 5k. You were with me on that yeah, race. Yeah, like how That's cool. Yeah. I just remember like pushing from four. To yeah. Like that's how I would optimally have liked to have run mm-hmm. today. But I just felt like I didn't have that same. There was something about Sydney Harbour 10. Yeah. Yeah. I remember it vividly. It was Sydney Harbour 10 was around my PB as well. So yeah. Maybe, maybe something special some, about that course. Mm, yeah. Maybe we should go. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> maybe um, that's the next race. Hey? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but it was good. Really yeah. good to see so many people um, happy with their times, and it's always it's always fast there. So, yeah, that was a long recap. Apologies. <laughs> <laughs> we were chatting about this earlier, but do you reckon you'd ever run rogue without a watch? Oh yeah. Oh yeah, I remember this. Um, oh god, that's not me. I, I don't know. Like maybe sessions, mm. but definitely not. Not a race. A race. Maybe a five k. Mm. Maybe a 5K. Like a park run? Yeah. Something like that. I would... I. This is a double-edged thing because it's like you want to know where you're going. But then if you're like looking at your stats, it can yeah. push you in the wrong way. Yeah. Yeah. But I guess... You start stressing. If you had like pegged yourself in that group and said, okay, like I'm as good mm. as these guys, mm. maybe then you don't kind of worry about splitting a... A 309 as much and you're just like okay these are the guys i need to be with yeah but yeah who knows did you run without a watch for a for like a, a 5k or 10k maybe but yeah. i feel like anything longer than that then oh marathon no way yeah you kind of need to have that yeah. information a yeah. bit more longer yeah. distance 100 mm. percent. Yeah. yeah yeah but 5k 10k i reckon yeah, yeah. sort of takes the edge off it though um and makes you race Mm. instead of just looking at the time yeah well that's kind of like when we were paced like when you get paced you kind of completely forget about Mm. um splits Mm. so like when we did the 5k with we had leo peterson pacing at roads when i ran my pb and like that i didn't look at the watch pretty much at all just focus Mm. on like staying with him yeah so i mean that went really well and you're not focused on focused on it so yeah it's a good point because like you definitely do hold yourself to the time a bit and Mm. think like oh shit like am i running the right pace yeah um whereas yeah like if you got someone pacing you or whatever and you can forget about that i feel like you do get a bit more out of yourself yeah yeah but you just all your energy is just like push 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 yeah 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. and you're not looking at your heart rate going oh geez like this is 
Yeah. yeah. My heart rate reckons it was like 140. Like it was so off today. Yeah. Yeah. I would have been literally in 190s from a K and a half in. Do you wear a chest strap? Nah. Just, yeah. yeah. I mean, it's, 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 it can be unreliable sometimes. Mm. Yeah. I was just shocked how far off it was. Maybe... Um, the cold weather as well, like your circ- Skin, blood circulation yeah. is not as, yeah. and the pulse is not as strong. But yeah. yeah, you've already got a low heart rate though, don't you, mate? High one forty for a ten k. Yeah, yeah no, during <laughs> sessions, Pushing. yeah, during sessions it gets some on the watch gets up to two hundred. Yeah, really? Wow. Yeah, yeah. So it was weird to see it, but I was not paying. Like it's, your heart rate's just going to be jacked. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> like yeah. yeah. Um, what about you with like? Um, because obviously triathlon has heaps of metrics and stuff like that. Mm. So you can't really get away. Like on the bike, you're focused on yeah power. power. Yeah, yeah. So actually, I um, earlier this year competed in the uh, the world champs duathlon. And it was out at the uh, the speedway at Eastern Creek. I don't know if you guys have been out there. Maybe with a car. But yeah. um, they closed the track and uh, they let us run and ride on it. Yeah. And it was a really cool experience, a very hilly experience. Um, but the first part of the race was a 5K run and uh, it was staggered. So everyone goes out in twos. Um, but with a try setting on your Garmin, if you press lap, it goes to the next event. Mm-hmm. So it will get you into the bike. Um, oh. And because it was a 2.5K loop, I was almost trying to negative split the first... 5k yeah but got through the 2.5 press lap it sent me onto the bike so i was blind for the next two and a half k <laughs> which actually was really good because yeah okay it sort of meant the rest of the race i was blind and um just made me really push so i think i crossed the finish line came 40th but i was absolutely spent yeah and then i can actually say i raced which is a nice feeling but on a normal triathlon, you don't want to do that. Mm. So for me, power is probably the biggest thing on the bike. Yep. If you can sit to a specific power, then you know roughly where your speed's going to be at. But if you train, let's say, for 210 watts, depending on the undulation of the course, your speed might be a bit higher, might be a bit lower, but you're still putting out the same effort. Yep. If that makes sense. Mm. So if you train to that wattage, you know that coming off the bike, you feel a certain amount of discomfort or you might feel good and that you can then push on your run or whatever it is. Yeah. And then are you pace for the run or do you have the, do you have the stride or the pod thing for power? No, no, no. So mine would be pace. Um, and then I do tend to look at heart rate. Just okay. because I'm but already at a chest, yeah. Yeah. chest strap. Yep. Yep. So I'm already at like a fairly high heart rate coming off the bike. Mm-hmm. Um, but then you just want to see what you can do in terms of management. Um, first K or 2K, as Dom said, you're probably testing the water a little bit mm-hmm. just to see what your quads are doing. Hammies as well. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Because if you go... <laughs> your heart rate's almost like, oh, I felt like my heart rate was lower in those first 2Ks. Yeah. And just like everything was getting used to it like so sore and yeah like i couldn't push it any higher um, yeah yeah so it depends on what type of event you do for triathlon mm. so for a sprint distance it's almost like what you said you throw the dice if you blow up you blow up it's only 5k mm. at the end but if you're in a half iron man oh yeah and you got to run 21ks at the end and the first two k's you're like pulling strings going holy shit how am i going to get through this yeah you're in a bit of trouble. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, yeah, it, it's dependent on what the distance is. Mm. But 100% pace and heart rate for me on the runs and then definitely power on the bike. Mm. Power is normally pretty accurate, like on the bike, as in, oh, yeah. you know, if you keep to that power generally, if you've done it a lot in training, it's probably going to be a bit more accurate than, say, heart rate. 100% on the run because it's yeah just it's, it saves you on undulation like you were saying if yep. you can keep to the same power yeah so you're not going to blow yourself up on hills exactly yeah so it's a, it's a metric that it's more controlled mm-hmm. whereas your heart rate will fluctuate depending on what the circumstances are in front of you yes mm-hmm. so if I've got a hilly course but I'm riding to 250 watts 
I know that that's the same effort that I'm putting out at training. Yeah. Whereas my heart rate might go up and down and up and down throughout that different course. Yeah. Um, and then comparison, if you're on a dead flat, you might know 250 watts is where I want to be. Yeah. But your heart rate might just stabilize <laughs> because you've trained to that. Yeah. 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 Uh, when I ran that 10K that I said I paced evenly when mm. I was training with Sally... Um, we used the stride pod. Yeah, how was that? Power. It was good. Yeah, yeah, it was good. So um, I used power during that. So pretty, probably one of the reasons why I was able to split it mm. pretty, pretty, right. pretty much even because I was adhering to that. So, yeah. um, so it's quite accurate. Nice. Yeah. A little yeah. bit of tech. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I lost and then I lost it. Oh, you lost, oh, you lost yeah, it? Yeah. <laughs> and then I got another one and then um, over time just went back to doing it off f like feel yeah um not even heart rate i don't feel like well maybe i am running too hard in sessions a lot of the time because like heart rate's real jacked but like if i was going to start looking at heart rate i would buy you know chest strap Mm. which um do you run with a chest strap though you got one didn't you i got the armband the arm one that's um but then i use it like twice and like like, i just always forget to put it on (laughs) um but I think if you're going to do it properly, you'd probably want to get a coach who prescribes by that sort of stuff. And yeah. um, otherwise, I just feel like, oh, I can't bother. I'll just do the session. Yeah. yeah. Got another, um, you know, Jed from Delta, maybe not. He does um, even, he does lactate testing. Oh, he lactate Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah, He's right. like full yeah. on. But Jeez. That would be cool, but just a lot it's, of effort. It's a lot of effort, but he's improved quite rapidly. Mm. Um, I think it's... Um, it's a really interesting space because in the running scene, even in triathlon, all these different metrics and lactate and your heart rate and everyone can get quite technical. Mm. But then it's learning how to actually understand the lactate, which yeah. is something that I don't understand. And you need that level of sports science for to, people to come in and actually go, well, this is what it means and this is how we prescribe because of it. Yes. Mm. Because you can get even professionals doing lactate and they've got all this data but they don't know what to do with it yeah yeah um so it can be a bit of a fancy it's the, it's the golden egg you know like the, the new shoes or yeah the best watch or mm-hmm. the heart rate strap so if i got a lactate testing i'd be like okay yeah <laughs> <laughs> like, what? i think yeah you need to like figure out all of the um like baseline sort of stuff like you did power testing with sally yes yeah so you'd need something similar done with lactate but i don't know Yep. how yeah. you do all that stuff I think it comes down to like if you enjoy getting into all that yeah that's one thing um, mm. but I'm pretty much just at the moment enjoy just like going out on effort based it just feels a little bit more free yeah um, and like improving so mm. it, it feels like a lot more effort to start like getting into the nitty gritty but if I enjoyed it I probably would yeah so anyway yeah. Anyways, moving on. Moving on. <laughs> yeah. Moving on. Um, exercise physiology. That's mm. uh, the main reason why we got JC on. Mm. Um, but we'll uh, yeah, kind of dig into a few common sort of questions and how um, seeing an exercise physiologist could help a runner. Mm. Um, I guess getting started. Uh, background you, have, you want to can you go you yeah go through a little bit of your yeah, yeah how'd yeah. you kind of get into it i guess yeah. <laughs> yeah 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 um yeah so takes me back jeez um so for me i've always been in sport <clears throat> and i think dom said this before like i've coached tennis played tennis quite at a high level when i was a little little kid um tennis is good tennis is a great sport tennis yeah. is in your head like oof. yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's that's a mentally a tough one well yeah. it's a game of chess when you think about it yeah um and physically you got to be able to perform that's a good one to do when you're young because you really have to like control yourself emotionally and stuff mm. like that and i wasn't good at that <laughs> no. yeah, neither tough was to coach. Like, yeah tough to coach and then i think i got to 16 um and I played in the quarterfinals of the Hardcore Championships in New South Wales. And I remember coming up against the second seed and he absolutely walloped me. Six one, six oh. And I just remember coming up to the, to the net, shaking his hand, I was like, Jeez man, like what are you doing? And he's like, just dropped out of school, um, pursuing this full time. And I've remember going home and having a chat to my parents going, 
I don't think I'm ready for that. Mm. Um, I think I was in year 10 at the time. I needed, I knew that education was such an important thing. And I'm pretty happy that I did decide to go and continue on with school um, because I remember looking back and trying to find this bloke and he's just nowhere to be seen. Yeah, right. So I hope for his sake he's uh, still playing tennis, but um, who knows? Mm. Um, but yeah, so from there, coach tennis for the next 10 years, which was a nice little uh, bit of cash for me, but getting more into the sports science side of things as we went along. Um, so done a couple of degrees in terms of uh, sports related. So sports science and management being one of them. I was pretty lucky to, to be able to get into some internships early on at university. So worked with the first 15 rugby team at Knox Grammar for a whole year. Um, and that was quite cool to see because they had, a, they had everything, um, everything and anything you wanted. So we did GPS tracking. We uh, looked at the number of hit ups they were taking in terms of tackles. But then from a running perspective, we did speed testing. So we had speed gates out. Um, so that was quite cool to see. And then from there, got a gig with the Rabbitohs doing some sports analytic work, um, which sort of put me down the path of um, ex -fiz. So from there, I've come out, I've got three degrees now, but ex -fiz, Masters of ex -fiz, um, was one of those things that I, I just wanted to get done. Um, so I was already a remedial massage therapist and just thought I knew I needed to do a bit more. But uh, throughout the years, I've been pretty lucky to work with some pretty high profile people. Um, so I've worked with um, the British Cycling uh, for a two week stint down south. And that was a really interesting thing, working with an international team. Um, so headquarters, um, I was treating them every day. So I know you boys came in for a treatment last week. Yeah. Um, Schmidt, I think it was your first- First treatment, Don first treatment. On, um uh, Instagram story. Thanks for that, mate. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it was. Good. Um, yeah. And for all the viewers at home, I think Luke was a little bit precious, so we uh, <laughs> yeah. we took it easy on him. Yeah, um, he was Thank squirming. You for that. <laughs> um, but Dom's a bit of a seasoned veteran when it comes to oh, come on, some soft tissue. Yeah, just got a higher pain tolerance. Higher like pain tolerance. <laughs> 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 Luke was almost trying to get himself off the table. I had to drag him back <laughs> yeah. um, But no, so, so these blokes who are obviously at that elite level, they're getting treated every day. Yeah. So two weeks, I think they raced in the last two days. So they were training for two weeks and then they had that big race. But every day they were on the table, sometimes an hour, sometimes a bit more. So you've got to think like from a professional's perspective, like they know the value in getting soft tissue work hmm. so they would be riding 180 200k a day coming in eating a ridiculous amount of carbs yeah what are they eating oh mate pasta rice just heaps carb load shoveling it. but these guys are thin like they're, mm. they're yeah yeah they're not yeah, big yeah. guys yeah um how many calories would you burn on the, like the you're doing a big ride, ride yeah yeah it. that's so, an easy day <laughs> yeah so, like, today for me, like, I was 2,000 and I did 75. Yeah, wow. yeah. So, and, and you need to be eating. So Yeah, so you're eating during, yeah. Your bars, your gels, your carb order. Yeah. Then you're probably having something at a pit stop as well, banana yeah. bread. Otherwise, you just bonk. You bonk, yeah. Mm. And I don't know if you guys have hit the wall in running. Mm. Yeah, um, definitely. It's very unpleasant. Well, cycling, just think of it like running, it's dangerous as itself. Like, you can fall and hurt yourself Ooh, but yeah, on a bike on yeah on the road it's mm. it can be pretty dead pretty bad but yeah so that was a really cool experience for the uh british cycling and um it it just showed like how much they valued soft tissue because there was i think three of us and we we're working yeah the whole day looking after these guys and then post race as well so there was a lot happening in that sense. Um, but then even just more recently, got a gig with the New South Wales Institute of Sport treating some of the athletes coming up for the uh, Olympic Games in Paris. Yeah, wow. Well, yeah, you, you know where that one yeah. is? <laughs> 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 such a little... <laughs> 
So I can confirm I know that Paris is the uh, place for the Olympics. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, so like, again, athletes are getting treatment every week there. So yeah, they know the value. They're probably putting out, you know, it's depending on their sport, obviously, but they're, they're training every day. They're in the gym quite a fair bit. They're doing their sport. Again, they're eating a shitload. So I think they're just dialing in now. They're just ramping up everything just in preparation for Paris coming up. Yeah. Um, and yeah, so that's a bit about me. And then obviously from an ex-phys perspective. So how did you get those, how did you get introed into those sort of gigs? Yeah. Um, so the clinic I was working at at the time uh, is a, was a sports clinic and you see different athletes coming through. So I was looking after one of the Australian track cyclists and she quite liked me in terms of how I treated. And then she put me onto the Australian cycling person. Yeah. Okay. And then they had someone reach out from the British cycling who passed my details on. And then once you're in the loop, you sort of stay in the loop. Yeah. Um, so I've been pretty fortunate enough to do different things like uh, the ATP Cup treating the players yeah wow. um anyone big names you've treated so the so the big guys like dominic team he was oh, there yeah. when i was there didn't get to treat him but he had his own entourage so they oh, bring right. their own physio they bring their own massage therapist yeah yeah, yeah they've okay. got their own security like they've got everything there yeah yeah i guess there's so much money in tennis like too much money yeah, <laughs> yeah. um so we had like um some of the i think the top i treated someone in the top 10 at the time wow um he was argentinian but really interesting to see how because they had sports trainers with them how the sports trainer would want the service to be performed Hmm. so Um. obviously in australia we've got you know ethical things and these players are worth a ton of money yeah and sometimes the uh, sport trainer would want you to do something and you're like mate that's that's just not me i'm i'm gonna let you do it you take control of that yeah um just from a I think ethical and legal perspective, you don't want to get yourself into hot water. Right. So, but yeah, it was a really, really cool experience. I think that sounds like it's more than just massage techniques. (laughs) (laughs) Hang on a minute. (laughs) No, definitely was massage. (laughs) Yeah. But it's a bit left field from you, (laughs) Dr. As he's got a grin on his face. (laughs) Didn't expect it to come through. (laughs) Normally we have to cut what I put in there. (laughs) But yeah, no, for instance, like in tennis, um, obviously shoulder health is a really important one. So they were wanting some really excessive um, internal rotation of the shoulder. Right. With a particular technique where you pin the muscle and then you stretch it. Um, mm. But for someone who's worth millions of dollars... Yeah, you wouldn't. Yeah, you'd um, be f- afraid if you did something. Well, that's right. You yeah. don't want to yeah, put yourself in a position where you're going beyond what you know to yes, be yeah. clinically safe. Yeah. Um, Fair enough. Yeah, makes sense. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Makes sense. So, so, so that, nothing that, under the that, sheets. Yeah, yeah. Clear that yeah. up for you, mate. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. just the way it was. Yeah, yeah. Bit, yeah. No, no, that's <laughs> But yeah, so then fast forward to today and I've had my own space now for about a year and a half. Um, we checked it out. looks great. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so it's moving along nicely. Um, but yeah, definitely from an exercise perspective, the value in strength training goes far and beyond just runners, but the benefit that you can get out of it from an endurance perspective, from injury prevention um, and performance gains is somewhat untapped. A lot of the top athletes are definitely focusing on getting their strength training in. Um, And I know you boys are dabbling in a little bit of it now. Yeah, Dom's more of a vet. Not really, though. Like, I think I'm doing a better job. I think at the yeah. moment you are. You're picking up more weight than I am, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I think this is one of the issues that you see. So endurance athletes or sport or runners, let's talk about runners, they tend to do what they know, which is long distance. So if you're going to run a marathon, right, and you're training for a marathon, you might get in the gym and just – pump out a shitload of reps at a low weight which i know something that you were doing (laughs) yeah but then you're not really getting the adaptation that we're trying to get out of the tissue so we're trying to get the tissue stronger 
and more resilient um, so that we have less injuries moving forward. But I think it's education on why we need to get stronger. Mm. Um, and it's just simply like if you can deadlift one point one to two times your body weight, the force production in the ground that you will get and being able to propel yourself forward is just ridiculous. Mm. So something a super shoe can't give you, yes. right? Um, but I think it's, it's definitely something that a lot of people are just scared of and they need a little bit of guidance with. Mm. So those, for example, when I hurt my hamstring, those exercises I did early on mm-hmm. will only take me to a certain point. Like I did sort of kettlebell, yep. t- um, 10 kilos. Um, but yeah, once you get to a certain point, I remember you were saying like, you got to up it basically. <laughs> well, that's right. So like your 10 kilos is going to be because you haven't got a lifting history, you're yep. going to get to a point where that's a really good starting weight, yep. but then you're going to plateau. Mm-hmm. And it's the same with running. You can run your 10K at a set p- like speed and you'll feel fitter, but you just got to push that little bit more to get the adaptation that you're after, yep. um, which is why you get delayed onset of muscle soreness, which is what's shortened to DOMS. Um, but we want that adaptation, yeah. which is why we push the strength. Yeah. But I think something that we need to, to really nut out is that it's not 15 to 20 repetitions. It's bringing it right back down like you did with your deadlift the other day and you're trying to hit two to five, maybe six reps. Then you've got your access, accessory lifts, which might be like, your single leg RDL. Yeah, that one. Yep. Where you start to get a little bit more higher rep range. Yeah. But your big dominant compound lifts, to name a few being like your deadlift, your squat, potentially even a loaded hip thrust. They're things that you want to hit quite heavy. Car phrase? Car phrase is huge for you guys. Yeah. Um, because we know that the demands of the sport, if you can get stronger in those movements car phrases in particular you're just going to be able to run for longer and harder yeah so there's a really cool stat actually um your soleus which is your deep calf muscle take can take up to eight times your body weight wow yeah so your little 10 kilo weight they're doing is not really doing much at all Yeah. yeah when you think about how much like dom running over 100ks this week how much load is going through that we mm-hmm. need it to be so strong so that there's no issues. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So how do you then progress from 10 kilo? What would you? <laughs> so there's like- a few ways you can progress to get adaptation. So weight increase is just the easiest one. Yeah. The other thing is time under tension. So if you've only got 10 kilos at home or you've only got body weight, just taking a little bit more time as you might come down through the phase of the exercise means that you're going to load the tissue longer. Okay. Mm. So, without getting into it too much, just increasing the time under tension is going to increase the amount of load in the area. Yeah, okay. Because I was about to ask that, like, if you don't have a gym membership, what should you be doing? And it sounds like that's the answer, yeah. Yeah. Um, and I think I said to you boys before, um, and this probably is a nice little segment into the, the next question, I'm a bit of a fan for a, a wall sit. So, a lot of new runners, when they get into running, all they do is run and they might not have a training history and that's fine, um, but there are little body home, like body weight home exercises you can be doing to get some sort of adaptation in your quad or your tendons. So, a wall sit is a really easy one to do because, as again, you can do it for 30 seconds, a minute, two minutes or 10 minutes. And you're just going to get different adaptation to the belly of the tissue. Mm. Calf raises is another really big one. Mm. So if you don't have any weights at home, grab what you can. Water bottles work really well. Load it up in a backpack, chuck it on. Whatever you've got. You've got a lot of books over there, mate. So just chuck a couple of books in a bag. Mm. Um, <clears throat> but they're really like big ones that we should be doing yeah. mm. and regularly. Would you ever do a uh, bit left of field, bit of loaded um, wall sit? A loaded wall sit. <laughs> I mean, yeah, if you've got the uh, if you've got the load, like the weights with you, mm. why not? Sounds like unloaded is. Uh, I feel like a challenge. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. 
I don't know. So yeah. ha- how long do you reckon you can do a wall sit for, Dom? Oh, I don't Should know. Should we do one now? No. <laughs> <laughs> You've got 10K. Um, no, I'm exempt. From you're exempt. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm exempt. So maybe I'm run maybe three minutes. Yeah. We can, yeah. You can do it and then we can talk through like what's happening in the body <laughs> as, as, he, as he suffers. <laughs> Nah, three minutes? I'll lock in three minutes. Three minutes. All right. Well, maybe we can um, get a video of Dom doing a three-minute wall sit. <laughs> yeah, riveting, yeah. And just see how he goes a bit later on. But I, I think, you know, it's an easy one to do. Mm. It's a really nice one to do pre-run as well, just to get the tissues nice and warm. Mm. Um, but yeah, I think all in all, really easy exercise that everyone can do at home. Mm. Mm. That's good. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Um, we were going to talk about like um, common injuries for um, new runners. Is that something you can get yeah. into? Yeah. yeah, yeah. So I think we all saw it when um, COVID hit, the gyms closed, all these people came out on the woodworks, the paths yeah. were packed. I don't know about the, the Bay, Bay Run. Oh, yeah. Bay it was Run was insane. Hectic. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I live down near Rhodes, so Rhodes is pretty full on. Yeah. But um, the interesting thing that I saw as I was going for a run was he saw a lot of people who probably hadn't run in a while. Yeah. The only thing they could do during COVID was run. Techniques were horrible, but also running to a level that they're probably not yet ready for. So I saw a lot of calves and achilles issues as well as some hamstring and quad issues it's a lot of tendon issues um and tendons are something that love load but if your tissue is not ready for it it's going to start biting at you Mm. um so yeah so some of these new runners again what they can be doing are those calf raises isometric calf raises heavy calf raises seated calf raises heavy yeah your wall sits if you don't have anything at home you know they're a great option so yeah but i think even leading into 2024 the run craze like the run club craze was just insane yeah so many people are joining run clubs which is amazing um and they're getting out and they're pushing themselves and they're getting into running which i think everyone can vouch as an awesome thing from a physical and healthy perspective but then also the injuries start to creep up as well so, and I know you both have had little niggles as you've gone throughout your running career, but for a new runner, is it something that might stop them running? I think they need to get into some loaded exercises just as a bit of a precaution and injury prevention. Mm. Yeah, I think, well, when you just start, like your your legs literally don't know what's going on yeah Mm. and you if you like yeah i often wondered i can't remember how i can't remember how much i increased i had don to sort of help me out Mm. but i think i'm very slowly like two runs a week and then three runs but it was a you know no exact science yeah um um i think you got quite lucky as well because you had like a a pretty good like sporting history so yeah yeah that's true you weren't starting from 100 percent zero yeah that's um, true yeah but you seemed to like when you started running you were able to increase and you didn't get too many injuries yeah to nothing. start with yeah i remember getting i think it was shin splints i don't even know like mm. it was just like real tight in the um shins so I assume that's shin splints <laughs> what is <laughs> that's that that's that wrong yeah no potentially a lot yeah. of runners do tend to get shin splints yeah mm. and then then that's pretty much it then i had like uh calf issues mm. when mm-hmm. i loaded up like i was trying to push make a mileage. point yeah, yeah. i'm just pushing mileage yeah for the sake of it and my yeah and that's a really interesting thing right like because you might have a mate like dom who's putting out k's and you try and keep up with them but if your tissue's not ready it's going to start to ask some questions yeah um which is a really interesting thing as a new runner like just being honest about how much to increase 
because it's easy to go out and say you've run 10k and be all happy about it which is awesome yeah but then you know what's your body going to do to respond um what are you doing with the recovery are you doing any recovery are you not Mm. so i think it's really interesting if you're outcome focused and if it's just to be healthy and get out and not enjoy about just enjoy running not worry about time or pace or anything then sure but then if you start to get into more you know tracking like your friend who's got a coach who's actually planning his runs yeah there's going to be a structure to it so that over time there's progressively overloading sessions and then he might underload him yeah yeah it's um it's a hard one to get right it is a hard one Mm -hmm. and you and you, you typically will fail yeah and then you learn from that mistake Mm. and then you go again so you know you're not going to be right every time yeah Mm. i think when i've had issues like with hamstring for example was at a time when i was like feeling like i was getting really fit Mm. and then the tendency is to just want to push it yeah Mm. because you're like oh no i'm going well like yeah and then that's when something goes wrong so um yeah it's hard it's hard to find that balance yeah yeah definitely um but i think now that you're in the gym yeah now that you've got a little bit more understanding yes i think there's a an incoming 1.5 times your body weight deadlift hey that's i don't think that's oh. how is that like 100 kilos <clears throat> no way 60 just under 60 kilos okay so 1.5 I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> 80, 80, that's a lot of weight. That's a lot of weight. Yeah, yeah. I don't know about that. See, if it was, I don't even know if it was 50 or <laughs> fifty or 60, but it felt heavy. Yeah. Um, but that's where I think I'll just keep trying to keep trying to do that. Uh, what was the other one you were telling me about with um, the hamstring? Uh, the bri- I think it was a bridge. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So what was the rationale behind that versus the just with the kettlebell for example or lower weight so for yours being a tendinopathy yeah um so an isometric which is a a static hold uh is known to help really improve tendon related issues so instead of doing what's called a concentric movement which is an up and down phase we want to just keep it whole like a hold so for you it was an elevated hip bridge mm-hmm. with a more emphasis on the outstretched leg. So targeting more of the hamstrings. Um, I think we're getting Luke to just come up into that bridge position and hold it for 30 seconds, um, dragging his heels into the, the chair or whatever he's elevated on just to get that hamstring firing. Mm. Um, if you try it at home, it's one that will really burn you as well. So yeah just be warned but it's a good exercise yeah Mm. um but yeah so we just want isolated static load through the tendon Mm. the concentric which is that down up phase is going to be fine but again we want time under tension we want that tendon to really get some warmth into it as well yeah yeah okay uh um what are your thoughts on like uh plyometrics or um more like sort of skipping or jumping sort of movements yeah i think they're really good for elasticity in the in the tendon especially um when we really peel it back running is a plyometric right so you're singular hitting force production toe off trying to push yourself forward um so i'm a big believer in getting some plyo work in Mm. But I think the issue that a lot of people do with plyos is that they do it too long. So it's a power production movement, which means we really want to keep it short and sweet. So for example, if you're doing like a pogo hop, um, you know, maybe like 10 to 15 seconds. Um, and it's just really to get your nervous system firing as well. Mm. Yeah. That's interesting. I guess like, sounds like it's kind of different to a lot of other gym exercises where you're going to failure and like, I guess the focus should be on the quality and like, you don't want to feel exhausted by the end of it. That's right. So typically when you program a 
plyometric based movement you want it to be further up the chain of an exercise program just because of the neuromuscular activity that's required imagine going for a 40k run or a a pretty hard run Mm. and then coming back and asking your body to do something that's quite high highly Mm. stimulating like a pogo or plyometric Mm. there's just greater chance of issues that may occur which is why they'll get you to do it earlier up in the exercise program stimulates that nervous system really nicely which then primes the tissue to do a heavier lift such as like your deadlift okay yeah um so yeah i guess you'd try and do like a couple of plyos at Mm. the start of a workout yeah yeah definitely can yeah um yeah and it seems like yeah they're pretty sort of high risk movements like i don't know sometimes you see people jumping into them a bit too soon or yeah um would you build up to that eventually or is it good for anyone to kind of just start um without getting into it too much there's like True. a bit of a plyometric continuum so with any exercise everyone can do exercise right but you're not going to throw them in the deep end and say let's see how he goes so you're not going to get someone to do 100 times or 100 percent of their body weight if they can't um so you start them quite low you assess them obviously then you can progress mm. but you don't really want to throw them in the deep end and sort of say let's see how you swim Mm. which i think can be a problem sometime and and then you know moving forward it it can be a problem because a lot of people can get information let's say from social media which it might look really fancy to do this particular type of exercise but are you the type of person that's ready for it yet Mm. um yeah it's with anything you've got to be sort of assessed or know where your limits are and sometimes people can uh yeah throw themselves in the deep end a bit too quickly yeah i think yeah some of these jumps do look pretty oh man techy and think- impressive um yeah yeah i can definitely see that happening yeah yeah don't go doing too many crazy plyometrics please <laughs> <laughs> um what about okay if you had like 20 minutes to do strength mm. and you're a runner yep what would you put in there let's <laughs> talk about throwing me <laughs> <in the deep. laughs> <Yeah, yeah. laughs> or what would what would like just basic <laughs> just a few but yeah that was like a, what would you do <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's tough i guess it's a that's bit it. more like individualistic depending yeah, on yeah yeah it is but yeah 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 exactly so dom's right so i think everything's a bit subjective in that sense um so luke might be different to dom dom might be different to me yeah um so for me with any exercise program i obviously start with a really nice warm-up so something that's going to stimulate the body enough so that you've got joint range of motion plus you've got some warmth in the tissue that you're about to to actually exercise shit i don't do that in the gym Mate, we'll get you onto it. <laughs> we'll get you onto it. So definitely something that you want to to do first, um, mm-hmm. and I think it, it's it's also contextually how many sessions are you doing a week? What's the main focus? Um, so for me in particular, like I'm doing two training sessions a week in the gym, and one's what we would call a hip dominant focus, and then the second day would be a knee dominant focus. So okay. for those playing along at home, hip dominant means movements like a deadlift or a hip thrust Mm -hmm. where you fold at the hips um, and then your knee dominant movements are going to be like your squats and your step ups. Um, So in saying that, compoundly being compound meaning multiple muscles working at once, so your biggest bang for buck. So if we're looking at 20 minutes, I might do a bit of a nervous system stimulus type thing like a plyometric to start just to get the nervous system firing. I might just stand on the, like in front of the mirror and do a couple of jumps just to get it firing. Mm-hmm. Um, then I might get into something like a heavy trap bar deadlift. So yeah. key one there that you know yeah. all about. Yeah. Um, and I'll follow it up with like an accessory lift. So something like I might be rehabbing or I might be um, looking after uh, or I might need a little bit of extras on. So I might throw in your calf raises in there. I might do some bent knee calf raises. Um, I might do some terminal knee extensions just to get some load through the quad. Um, 
And then typically following on from that, if I've done a hip dominant main lift, I'll do a knee dominant secondary. That's a very loud bike. That is a very loud bike, isn't it? <laughs> Put the music so, do, um, do, do, do. Does that mean what the uh, secondary movement is paired together with it or? Um, so yeah, so secondary or accessory um, being something that you're working on. Right, right. So like for Schmidt, it might be he's working on his hamstrings or his calf, yep, yep. but his main lift is his squat. Okay. So he's going heavy in the squat and then, I don't know, like trying to get range of motion or improve whatever he's doing. Yep, range of motion. Yeah. It might be that he's doing an isomate or a, a holded calf raise. Oh, yeah. Um, so it doesn't have to be something that's too taxing mm. because the main lift is the most taxing thing. Yeah. So yep, we yep. want to nail that main lift just because you're going to have more bang for buck. We've only got 20 minutes, right? Mm. So we, that's why something like a compound movement is something that we would focus on. Mm. If you've got 20 minutes, you might only get in, you know, four lifts, main lifts. So it might be like your trap bar being your main lift with an accessory. And then it might be a step up with an accessory. And then it leaves you a little bit of time to just do some cool down, maybe some foam rolling or something like that. Mm. If you had, what wouldn't be a, like a good amount of, if you had more time, like how long would you spend in the gym ballpark or you would add a few more? Yeah. Yeah. This is, and, and again, it's all based on context. Yeah. So f- for all of us here, we all work full time. Um, me, I can't get, I can't go longer than 45 minutes just because otherwise other commitments come into play. Mm-hmm. So for me, 45 minutes is probably the right amount of time um, where I would probably get in three different blocks of main exercises as well as a warm up and a cool down. Okay. Um, but if you've got 20 minutes, you can still get in a really good workout without the time restrictions. Hmm. Um, and I think that's just what it comes down to. It's just, it's if you've only got 20 minutes, it's better than saying, oh, I just won't do it. Yeah. Which is, I think, something that a lot of, and I've been guilty of it as well. <laughs> what if um, you've only got like five minutes? <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> wow! So, all right, all right. Here we go. Oh. If, if you got five minutes, but you got five minutes every day. Yeah, yeah. Really good question. So I would probably be doing something that I need help with. So if that's so for me, I would probably be doing like a calf raise complex, something to do with the calf, because I know that that's going to get something. What's going to get beaten up throughout the week, right? You're running. Your focus is on force production. The toe-off phase is really important in running, which is where the calf and the gastroc actually comes into play. Mm. It needs to be strong. You've got your Achilles that can get irritable. So we need to be able to keep that tendon really healthy. So it could be as simple as doing a really heavy set of calf raises. It could be a really heavy set of bent knee calf raises, which a lot of people miss out on. Um, so your calf actually has two different muscles. You, uh, gastroc and then deeper which is your soleus but if you don't have any weights doing an isometric hold where you're just you know holding a bag of rice or whatever it is on your toes you might do some marches on the spot um but you're right so if you only got five minutes i'd be focusing on what you need to work on so luke might be his isometric hamstring hold um you might do the wall sit for five minutes so I thought it was three minutes. Yeah. <laughs> well, he's going to work up to five, yeah. right? So it's yeah. a bit of progressive overload. Yeah. It doesn't hurt anyone. I just yeah, okay. him going like yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, that's yeah. interesting because I guess, yeah, those muscles are like taking the most load and um, at the, the highest sort of risk. So it makes sense you'd want to get yeah. them strong. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, but obviously aim for 20 minutes. <laughs> yeah. So you're gonna, minimum, right, if you got... 30 seconds. <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I mean, in the grand scheme of things, like you just do what you can. Yeah, yeah. exactly. So, and, and if it's only two sessions a week, it's two sessions a week. Yeah. If it's one session a week, like Luke's doing, it's one session a week. Mm. But just make sure it's a quality session. It's yeah. not, is it going to hurt me on my running? It's, this is going to help me improve my running and keep me running. Mm. Mm. 
Yeah. Which is the main thing that I think we need to flip the switch on. Yeah. How do you rehab Achilles? Or is that a dependent on... Because I've, I've got a few friends or someone that's got Achilles issues and it kind of has just stuck around yeah. for years. Yeah. So it's like a tricky... It, and, it, and it is really tricky. Yeah. Um, again, it's something that with runners will come up quite often mm. um, and it can come down to load. So if you're running 100Ks a week and you're getting some irritable Achilles discomfort, um, it might be that you're running too much. But again, it's really hard to say without yeah. actually seeing the person. So yeah, yeah, of course, yeah. But again, focusing on those calf-related rehab exercises is going to be your key. Yep. Um, mm. And, yeah, that's probably the Pretty thing that it. I would do. Yeah. Mm. Cool, cool, cool. Um, what about, like, uh, technique? Like, mm. um, I think it's easy for people to get in the gym and be lifting weights, but, um, yeah, n- if you're not doing things right, it could be targeting the wrong muscles or you could get injured. Um, yeah. uh, any tips for technique and are there any common pitfalls you see with certain exercises? Yeah. I mean, the tip that I would say is just to, to get in front of a healthcare professional or someone who's in that field. Oh, yeah. I think I know a guy. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, purely because like you can look at something online and then try and emulate it or copy it. Um, and you're right. And there are pitfalls and there are technique issues and there are things that might arise because of poor form. Um, but I think it's really important to just find someone that you trust, someone that you like. Um, and it might even be a friend that has a little bit of knowledge in the space that can direct you, show you a few things. Um, and it's just like with running, like you took Luke under your wing. It's the same with strength. Mm. Um, I think it's a good point because it's probably you want to get that stuff right and once you see like um, someone with experience um, yeah. you're going to have that knowledge forever like exactly um, and you're going to get it right every time then so yeah yeah makes exactly sense. like it's not something you need to do all the time but to make sure you do it right the first time yeah exactly and, and that's right like you develop a lot of muscle memory with these things so you definitely take it on board you'll remember it forever mm. just as much as you know when you train and you're running you, you know how to run a 32 minute 10k now you know what it feels like yeah <laughs> you know what i mean yeah so but yeah great question i think yeah if you can just try and get in front of a healthcare professional or even a pt or some friend a mate who's got a bit of knowledge in it yeah um get them to do it with you they might have a few pointers take it on board develop your knowledge that way Makes sense. Mm. Um, what are your thoughts on uh, CrossFit? What are my thoughts on CrossFit? <laughs> <laughs> that wasn't on the list. <laughs> <laughs> what are your thoughts on CrossFit? <laughs> oh, the deflection. Yeah. <laughs> That's a CrossFit. little reverse. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Udo. Oh, right. I was like, what are you... What are you? I'm, I'm opinionated in this. I uh, know. Oh, <laughs> um, or you just hear, I guess, like people jumping into CrossFit and um, because the nature of the sport is that they throw all these activities that are super foreign and like you've never trained for them before Mm. and you have to compete in them. Like um, if you haven't been properly educated in how to lift or how to um, do certain movements, then yeah, you you could be getting injured. Um, But in saying that, a lot of people doing CrossFit know their stuff and know all the lifts pretty Mm. good. But I guess, yeah, for, for beginners, it could be if you jumped into a CrossFit competition um yeah it could be tricky you might get a lot of hate for your comments on crossfit i don't know i think well some of the crossfit like people their technique is yeah dialed in like yeah and a lot of them know yeah 100 percent what they're doing um good save yeah but i think for <laughs> for someone who's jumping into crossfit as like a first timer yeah it could um, be risky yeah could be risky i think so but you'd hopefully have guidance from an expert yeah know? yeah exactly yeah. i think crossfit is has a wonderful community mm. um 
I don't know if you've ever spoken to someone who's in CrossFit oh, that yeah. just can't stop talking about it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Probably um, similar to running. Really. Yeah, so, yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, very similar running, yeah. So I think there's a really nice thing. They bring you in. It's like a family. Um, I think in the grand scheme of things, if you're trying something new, you always want to be guided by someone who's got a bit of experience in it. Mm. So the coaches would take you under their wing and show you a few things. The thing that I have a bit of a bone to pick with crossfit is it's always a maximal effort like it's it's as you said it's a, yeah true yeah it's it's like a what as many reps as you can do and like everyone's pushing themselves to the limit so you're under fatigue a lot and what we know is that when your body's under max fatigue and then you're requiring it to do a complex lift like a clean and jerk or like a elevated box jump tends to have more injuries than that come from that mm. because your body's so fatigued. Yeah, right, yeah. So great sport, great community. If you love it, keep doing it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's good to say. Yeah. <laughs> um, but I think, like, it comes down to you understanding your body and then knowing your limit because mm. if you're getting to, like, a level where you're you might, oh, I might get injured here. Then you might need to just take a step back, have a bit of a breather, think about what your goals are. If you're like, I don't know, Sally, who's 40 years old and has three kids, I don't know, that's pretty important not to get injured, right? Mm. Mm. Yeah, true. I guess with running, I was thinking, hang on, like we push ourselves to the limit when we race, but you're not doing that every workout. Um, Smitty is. <laughs> <laughs> Tuesdays are getting questionable. <laughs> Two hundred heart rate. Mate. Yeah. Jeez. yeah, yeah, maybe I am. Yeah, CrossFit at heart. Yeah. <laughs> Jeez, the podcast has gone from running to <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Done with the wild left. Yeah, yeah. Good. Just trying to I think he just got us all in trouble there. Five minutes. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Think about CrossFit. <laughs> We'll chat about this later. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Think about other physios. <laughs> Jeez. All right. Um, massage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So another part of my profession, obviously, is remedial massage. So I've had you boys on the table. Um, Dom's a little bit better than Luke. He tends to take the... Uh, <laughs> Relax. <laughs> I'll take we, it. We should, yeah. we should definitely film Luke getting yeah. treated next time. Yeah, yeah, I'll be like, well, dial it up. Yeah. Like, ah, no, never mind. <laughs> um, but yeah, so like from a from a tissue perspective, um, just trying to get rid of, if, if you have had an event, the lactate in the tissue, flush it through. So I know we can do active strategies such as going for a, an easy run following a big day. So something that you might be doing tomorrow. I'm not sure. Yep. Um, but then another easy way is just to get on the table and let someone do that for you. Um, talking about after hocker, so, yeah, yeah, which yeah. I was still feeling pretty rubbish, yeah, even at that point, yeah, yeah, before, yeah, and then you know, increasing blood flow to the area, we're trying to get as much good things to the tissue as we, we can. Um, and then from a, a training perspective, you might have 100 k's in your legs or plus, you might be tightening up a little bit, mm -hmm. um, your, your glutes, your hamstrings might be feeling a little bit more fatigued. Um, so it's about just getting a little bit more range of motion through that belly of the tissue that we can so that you can go out and do what you, you need to the next day. Um, so yeah, a lot of, a lot of benefits that athletes see in getting some soft tissue work post race during a session, uh, sorry, during a training block, um, just to try and get them to the main outcome or goal. Yep. Mm. Yeah. It's pretty interesting. Um, when you're talking about being on the British cycling team for the world championship, Yep. that they were getting massage every day every yeah day. like i feel like that's just something that you never really hear about that much like people getting treatment yeah at like a i don't know amateur kind of level like we're at yep. yeah um, yeah yeah uh, and and to be fair dom it probably was excessive mm. um so cyclists were getting a lot of their lower limbs treated and their upper like their neck just from the position they're on the bike and their hips, obviously, but um, I think the, t the the work that we're doing doesn't necessarily always give them the outcome that they want every single day that we're treating them. Mm. 
but for them psychologically they can't ride the next day unless they've been treated right yeah right so like i don't know if you guys are into the tour de france or anything like that but they have a team bus that follows the riders and they go to the hotel the day after and they obviously eat a shitload and they rest but there's a guy treating those riders every single day so that they can go out and ride 180 200 k's the next day Mm -hmm. and some of them won't ride or they won't perform unless they've had that treatment so something that i saw with the tennis as well like i was pretty lucky to treat andy murray's brother so pretty pretty prolific doubles player he loved treatment so he was in to see me every day and then he was also getting an adjustment from the Cairo and it sort of is really interesting because you as a therapist take a step back and you go well I'd never tell anyone to come and see me every day you just wouldn't from a financial perspective but also from the tissue perspective you're just not going to get the quality out and the outcome that you're trying to achieve but these guys get it every day. Yeah. So it, just, it blew my mind. Mm. I guess like putting a bit of focus on it though, like you might not be getting a great outcome, but at least you have addressed that sort of component. Like, I don't know, you get your neck adjusted or whatever. At least you're going to be thinking about, okay, my posture, am I yeah. doing yeah. this right? Yeah. Um, and, and that's right. Like it's the outcome there is to get these athletes to perform at the level that they require to perform at. Hmm. Um, and if that means getting a, an hour soft tissue treatment at night every day, then they're going to do that. Hmm. Um, yeah. Yeah. You're right. Interesting. Mm. Um, yeah. I guess with running though, like we're putting in quite a lot of load into our bodies, like running, I don't know, 100 plus k's a week or mm. running not even 100 plus k's a week, like whatever your max is, like um, to get better at running, you kind of have to be pushing that limit. Yep. Um, so, yeah, it makes sense. Like your muscles get tight. And, and I think a really easy way that everyone can get some soft tissue work in at home is by just simply using a foam roller. Mm. So, like, I don't know if you guys use a foam roller at all. Uh, I meant to. <laughs> so we're, we're going to change Luke's recovery <laughs> strategy here. So he's going to he's going to be absolutely blitz the GC Mara. Um, but the idea is like if you can't get in to see someone regularly, it might be once a month, it might be once a fortnight. The stuff that you can do at home just to get some more length through that tissue to get more joint range of motion is by using a foam roller and your body weight. You might also have a trigger ball. If you don't have a trigger ball, you can use a tennis ball or a cricket ball, releasing off the hips, you know, like really easy strategies that you can do while you watch the telly at home or while you listen to With the Chiefs podcast. Yeah. Little plug. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, so five, 10 minutes, you know, it's yep. as you said, what can you do in five minutes? Yeah. So and there's plenty, like you said, you can do other things doing, it's not, that's not a really bad idea. Focused. Yeah. You put can just five minutes aside for strength or yeah, something to do with recovery each day. Yeah. 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 And there's multiple strategies for recovery, right? Like mm. soft tissue, but I think it's foam rolling and trigger pointing is something that you can do quite regularly. Mm. If you know, you know, you might not have the money to go and see someone every week, mm. you might not have the time. But if you've got five minutes and you're in front of the telly and you're looking over there because I can see the foam roller over there. Yeah. And you're looking at the foam roller going, geez, I should get on that. Yeah. You might feel great. And the next day you might run amazingly. Yeah. So really easy thing to do. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What's the, those cup, what were those? Cups ah. Things? Yeah. <laughs> we might save that one for an episode where we get the boys on the table. We'll do some cupping, but it's just a variation to the treatment. So, with soft tissue or deep tissue, you're applying pressure to the tissue to get a result, whereas the cups will lift. So, it's just a variation. Okay. Um, Can be a bit of placebo, but again, placebo can work. Mm -hmm. Um, A lot of athletes love it and a lot of athletes will require it. Um, Some of them as well will need dry needling just because that's what they think helps them. Yeah. Yeah. are there many other services like can you do dry needling or I don't I can't do dry needling. Um, it's 
something that I can do if I do a course on. Yeah. Um, but I just don't see why sticking a needle in someone. If someone's coming to see me, sorry, they want to see me for my skills, my skill set with my hands to treat the tissue, mm. not to put a needle in their tissue and let them sit there. Yeah. So, yeah. personally, that's why, like, I probably won't go down the dry needling route. Mm. But if they see anyone else, you know, you can get needles done. They might get a really good result. Yeah. Are there any other um, treatments? So, just cupping and massage mostly? Yeah. I mean, like, there's there's a stack of other things. Like, there's always a gimmick out there. Yeah. Um, <laughs> And again, it's like the chicken or the egg. It's like, what can you do to get the outcome that you're after? Mm. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, okay. And I guess like there's many ways to skin a cat. Like you, yeah. you giving a massage is probably achieving the same thing. Yeah. Um, or better than uh, some of these other techniques anyway. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's yeah. right. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. That's um, it. Sell me up. <laughs> <laughs> well, I had a phenomenal run on sunday after i was treated so yeah right yeah there we actually, go that's gotta be one of your best run yeah it actually was it was really good, good. um my as i was saying before with hocker like i just felt like still on the friday because i tried to do a session mm. i just felt pretty rubbish mm. um but yeah sunday was good um um yeah definitely played into performance on that day yep so it was good um look forward to coming the next, next session yeah. yeah yeah we'll have to get like lapels or we'll have to figure something out to yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah um should we do your segment dom yeah yeah, yeah let's, um, run through, let's run through your pretty segment. much every guest we've had on mm. we've asked the following questions yep and it's all kind of like related to running sort of lifestyle yep topics yep um, so we're getting, yeah, a bit of a database now, like it could be, yeah, a few sort of trends that we could analyze if we, uh, went back and listened to all of it, but, yeah, um, anyways, it <laughs> <laughs> um, shoe choice, like what's the Oof. shoe rotation for you looking like? Yeah. Yeah. So I'm loving the Nova Blast fours at the moment. Oh, yeah. So I'm really enjoying those. Um, I was previously in the New Balance Rebels, um, as a bit of an everyday, trainer which rebel was it again uh i think it was e2 they're like a. you saw them the other day yeah i, I think they remember. were the ones chris um, or three remember. two yeah I maybe the remember. new one yeah yeah um but i'm enjoying the nova blast a lot more and then the ratio that i've got at the moment is um a new balance oh what's the fuel cell v2? oh yeah oh, yeah, 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 one. yeah yeah the white one with like a bit of purple okay on the heel oh yeah okay it's not the newer, like the new... No, it's not that, the new one. That one, no. that, yeah. It's the, yep. I think it's the season before that. Yep. Um, but yeah, I'm enjoying those. Yeah, nice. Sounds like a good rotation. Yep. What about um, the bike? Or bike? Oh. Yeah, yeah. Well, <laughs> what about the bike? Because we don't have a bike on there. Yeah, we don't have... Oh, yeah, yeah no, no bike on here. Um, so this is where it gets expensive, right? Yeah, the bike, um, for sure. So my partner doesn't like it. We got three bikes at home. I had four at one stage. Wow. So currently I've got a roadie, which is a road bike, and I ride a Focus Izako Max. Um, so that's something that I do most of my training on. And then just leading up into race day, I've got a BMC Time Machine TT bike. Um, What's so, the difference between? Yeah. Is that with the big aero bars? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So TT bike is different shape so the actual carbon fiber is a lot more aerodynamic so it's made to cut through the air then you're in a forward leaning position so you're beyond your elbows tucked in so you want to make yourself as small as possible um, there are no brakes on the front so you've got to come off those bars to to break so it can be very dicey at times yeah right so if you see someone in the aero position they've yep. got no brakes no brakes yes. <laughs> yeah yeah so okay yeah so the aero position is that yeah and then you've got this something called the base bar which is what your aero bars are connected to so you can just oh so yeah, you can okay. come off it yeah but, yeah. but you think of it you're like leaning down into this bar yeah so you yeah fire right. out yeah it's not so, something you've got to practice like yeah exactly yeah, yeah. And, and it can be quite intimidating getting onto one of those bikes oh, for the yeah. first thing um can be quite uncomfortable 
mm. as well because you're very forward and your eyes want to look forward at the road, but you want to keep your head as small as possible. Yeah, yeah. So it's about making yourself as aerodynamic as, as you can to try and cut through the, the air. So like we're talking about what's before. So when you're on a TT bike, your wattage will be lower than a road bike because you're more aerodynamic. Yeah. Mm. So you should go faster for, when you're tucked in that aero position yeah. for the same amount of power. Yeah. Um, yeah so right. it's really important to get on that bike and practice. Plus, it can be really uncomfortable. Mm. Um, so, yeah. So, they're my two bikes at the moment. Um, can't talk about swimming because I don't swim enough. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> rope um, or something. I don't know. Other equipment? The heart rate monitor? Yeah. So, I'm a bit of a Garmin boy. So, I've got Garmin cycling computer, Garmin heart rate monitor, and Garmin watch. Mm. Um, what about uh, supplements you take in? Any? Yep. Yep. So currently I'm taking protein and I tend to mix that in with creatine as well. So um, yeah. And then magnesium is something that I'll have mostly after like a big day. So big day either at work or training wise um, just to try and help with that sleep uh, post yeah. Mm. So just um, those two, though. Yeah. What yeah. does the creatine do again? <sighs> Too sciencey, man. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Too sciencey. Um, but it's the most research supplementation. So. Really. Yeah. So I'll if if you're worried about creatine, like supplementing creatine, just go ahead and read the research because it supports like muscle hypertrophy and growth. Yeah. Um, which is what we want. Yeah. Um, a lot of people get a bit nervous about. Um, water mass loading or increase in yeah, I've heard water that. weight yeah um which can be a side effect of it um but i think from an endurance perspective there's a, a fair bit of research that's come out that supports the supplementation of creatine so okay. i think it would be a really good thing to read into yourself um and yeah yeah not a bad supplement to mm. look into mm-hmm. i guess is it because there's the three energy systems mm. um like the first one's like ATP, that just initial yep. 15 seconds of power that you got. Yep. And the next one is um, the anaerobic, like lactic sort of system, which Jeez, is- mate, you're good at this. Yeah. Which is, that's what uses creatine, I think. Yeah. I'm, again, the science behind it is yeah. really in depth. So I don't know, mate, this is- No, I go, have a crack, school, mate. Go. High school kind of knowledge. <laughs> <laughs> so- yeah, I could be way off, but I think... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, I think, you do more. <laughs> I think for sports where um, the effort only lasts like a minute or so, that's where you'll get the most benefit from creatine. Yep. But in saying that, you're always using all three energy systems, so you'd probably get some benefit in any sport, possibly. I'll wait to run with Matt Gore on Wednesday for him to say yeah. it was all wrong. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't know. Maybe So maybe it's not going to change the world because mostly um for endurance i guess you'd be working in the third energy system which is aerobic where um creatine is not playing as big a role Mm. but i don't know do your own research can't hurt yeah yeah, definitely do your own research but there's there's some really good stuff that's come out so have a look into it yourself um but it's something that i like to supplement into just keep me moving and strong yeah absolutely i think if you're lifting weights and you want to see the benefits of that like Mm it could definitely help with that for sure yeah Mm. like you might not use it for running performance but if you're trying to get stronger as a runner and go Mm. to the gym then maybe it could help there so yeah yeah i guess if it's not helping with the sport in general there's definitely other stuff you could still be using it for yep um uh diet any ride or die diet (laughs) yeah whoa Ride or die diet. Oh, yeah. Uh, anything. When, when Dom says diet, he's looking for like, like, he's looking for like alkaline. Yeah. How acidic you Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> anything in particular that you follow, like rules with your diet, anything you avoid, I don't know, anything. Um, no. Yeah. I'm a bit of a seafood, eat food type guy. Um, yeah. Very much carb heavy. I love a pasta. Ooh, I love yeah. a bit of rice. Um you know your proteins so your chicken beef so yeah nothing too crazy um just enough to fuel yourself for the next day i guess um because my work's pretty labor intensive as well um you just got to be on top of that too 
Mm. So if you're under fueled in the morning, you're going to find yourself starting to drift, especially if you've got someone on the table that requires a little bit more uh, physical work. Um, you can definitely feel it. So feeling in that sense. Mm. How about yeah. you boys? What do you eat? Yeah. John, what's your, how have you, what's your alkaline Has anything changed levels? since we had that Gold Coast episode? What? Or recap. I don't know. I think oh, we right. talked about gold, uh, What did diet, I say back then? I, I don't even I don't remember. Know. I don't like, remember what nah, I said my, either. My diet's like, I eat anything. Um, yeah. 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 But focus on, I think, uh, like trying to get more leafy greens in at the moment. Right. Um, just because I feel like it's easy to kind of start neglecting that sort of stuff. 100%. And I, like just anecdotally, I feel better yeah. when I'm taking it. Um, but yeah, pretty carb heavy. Like, yeah. Here's one for you. So when I was working with the British Cycling, there was um, this one bloke, Ben, who was probably smaller than you, Luke. Like he was a little guy. <laughs> um, but he comes up to me the day before the race and he goes, well, I was treating it. He says, oh, mate, do you mind just like heading down to the kitchen and asking the chefs to make some, some white rice? And I was like, yeah, yeah, not a problem. So I go down there and I said, oh, can we get like a bowl of rice made up? So the chefs did it. I didn't think anything of it. I just told them to make some rice, went back up, finished the treatment for the afternoon. Um, they did what they did for the arbor. They came down for dinner and there was a bowl of white rice on, in front of Ben's placemat. And he goes, oh, do, do you reckon, like it was just a small bowl. Mm. Anyway, like, I've never seen a bloke eat more rice in my life. Like just plain white rice yeah no salt no it was just rice i was like how is he putting this away <laughs> but he would have had six bowls really of Jeez. just rice just raw ro- oh. and then he had veggies but like yeah, 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 purely yeah, yeah. carb loading yeah. yeah and it was all rice oh. Jeez. and he goes i love it it helps me sustain i think the next day they had like a 240k ride that was quite challenging so he's just mm-hmm. quite that under and, he, and that's the thing but he was he was a st- dick yeah so he needed to have that carbohydrate stores yeah to be able to perform at the level that he was and i think he came like 11th yeah right which is ridiculous that's nuts yeah so uh, i remember the chef going yeah i made the rice i was like no dude like he wants a bowl <laughs> like, yeah 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 chuck a kilo of rice in there make it up and then just give Jesus, it to him yeah and he was piling on his plate that's, that's crazy insane. but yeah so like it Speaking about diet, their yeah. diet was very carb heavy. Mm. So they were having like oats based stuff in the morning. Lots of fruit actually, just to get the fiber in as well. Mm. Um, but then you think about from an endurance perspective, I don't know if you boys have like carb water or gels. They're smashing so much different liquid based carbohydrate yeah. stuff on the bike. True, yeah. That their internals must be like, oh. Yeah, fine. Yeah. Like you, I don't know if you guys have had like five gels in a race or something. Like oh, you just yeah. feel icky. Yeah. yeah. So interesting. Mm. Mm. It would yeah. have been yeah, pretty cool experience being on like a team like that. Yeah. With yeah, yeah, yeah. And as you said, like it's working with like an international team was was awesome because you're with the best of the best. You're with the physios that are top quality. Like they've been selected to be on that circuit and then you sort of take a step back and just go well shit i'm one of those people too because they've been you've been selected yeah um so yeah it's quite nice but also really cool to see from a professional's standpoint what the requirements are of these athletes Mm. and it's like you get given a job they're required to do that job yeah Mm. And in cycling, you're a part of a team, right? Yeah. And your team might be, you might be the guy that works the hardest at the front. And if you're not working hard, like they're telling you on the, they got earpieces, pick it up, work harder. Mm. So it's like from an individual sport like running, you tell yourself that. Yeah. But like, this is your job. You're getting paid to do this. Yeah, right. Yeah. Intense. Intense. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. 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 Very intense. Yeah. So you're with the best of the best and still with the best of the best. Still with the best of the best. <laughs> <laughs> or a fall from grace. <laughs> 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 <laughs>
<laughs> With the cheese. Yeah. <laughs> best of the best. Best of the best. <laughs> that was good for you, man. Yeah, thanks. I've got to, got to have it every now and again. I've just butchered it anyway now. <laughs> um, so when are we getting you boys on the table again? When do you recommend? What's the plan? Well, we've got seven weeks. Seven weeks. Till Goldie, I think, off the top of my head. Yep. Yeah, so there'll be some big, big long run sessions coming up. Yep. Mm. So, yeah. Maybe a couple of weeks' time, yeah. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, weeks. I think, yeah, let's get in a few sessions before the GC and mm. hopefully we can help you guys keep performing at the level that you're performing at. Right? Absolutely. Yeah. Appreciate the support. Yeah. yeah, no, it's been good. Yeah. And um, thanks for coming on the podcast. Yeah. No, 91st. I think it's a. <laughs> The road to 100, I think road to you 100. said. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The yeah. first of the fake episodes. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, hang on a minute. <laughs> For those that didn't know, Luke said that last episode. So. <laughs> <laughs> fake episode. Fake episode. Hey, this is the realest episode. It's all good. <laughs> <laughs> oh, all right. Thanks, mate. Ah, Thanks for coming on. It's been a yeah. pleasure. Yeah, it was good.